Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. <sighs> Feels good to be back on here. Dude, I was sick for like a couple days there, and like, <laughs> it was just like every day I thought I was getting better, and then I wasn't, and then da-da-da, but here we're back. It's happening. We're back on track. We're back, and everything's flowing, and you know, Right now, because it's the end of the year, because um, I'm moving out of my house next week, I just feel this like really big time of like reflection and this opportunity to look at like all of the different times in my life where I've taken big leaps and big shifts. And I wanted to share some of these with you because I feel like they can be inspiring, they can be activating. And also, if you're in a moment right now where you're like, I know I need to take this big leap, but I'm really scared or I don't know how to do it, or, you know, like, da, da 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 Like, it could be all the things, right? It doesn't really matter. It's a, it's, the point is, is like, a lot of us, because it's, you know, our collective mass consciousness, we have this new year, everyone's looking at what, what are, like, what, how's my life going? Where do I want my life to be? And also, um, I mean, from an astro- astrological perspective, from many different perspective of what's happening in the current situation in the world, Uh, I think a lot of us are looking internally and asking ourselves, how can I take more responsibility for my life? How can I make my life into the life that I really, really dream of? Like, not just waiting for someone else to fix it, not waiting for, you know, da, 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 like um, a miracle. We are the miracle. I mean, the miracle works through us, like through us believing, through us taking action, through us (sighs) having this trust in the universe that it's all working out and then taking action in accordance with that, right? So that is, that's how we work with this beautiful energy that comes to us through our bodies from the universe, right? To play this beautiful game of life. So for me, like, there's this moment of, like, (laughs) feeling really nostalgic about, um, so this home that I'm in, it has been under my care um, for over four years now. And originally we rented it, my ex-partner and I rented it, um, my ex-boyfriend Andy and I rented it as a community space. So we didn't live here for the two years of us having it. And we just have it had it completely for the community. And it was so beautiful. We've had hundreds and hundreds of events here. I am not exaggerating because during lockdown we had sometimes three or four events here in one day. We had like a schedule, it was on the Google Calendar, people could come, sign up for it. We had like many people hosting, um, like eight different hosts every month. And so there was just so many things happening. (laughs) Um, And then as the um, COVID ended and the island got more busy, I moved into the space. Uh, So now, right now, this is my home for the last couple of years. And also it's always still been this like place of like this hub of community and connection and healing and love and pleasure, you know, just like this yummy vibration of being fully embodied, dropped in, fully present in the moment. Well, the other day on the full moon, I was (laughs) feeling nostalgic. And so I was looking at my highlight reel of like all the things that have happened in this space. And then I like went back and I was like, you know, I've lived in other villas here on the island. So during lockdown, uh, some girlfriends and I rented a huge villa on the beach. And when I was looking at this, I was like, oh my gosh, we did so many events at that space and so much connection and so much fun and healing, pleasure. And <laughs> and then I was like looking backwards. I just kept like, like, I was going down the hole, like the, you know, the wormhole here. <laughs> the spiraling down but it, maybe it was maybe it's like better to say spiraling up because I was like I was feeling really good and like happy with all of the different connections and all the different beautiful things that I've created over the years and been part of because before that I was part of building uh consulting co-working and co-living spaces to launch for like I don't know like six years um and 
and this is all over Asia. So then I was like looking at all these <laughs> Instagram posts and like uh, highlights and stuff of like me sh uh, launching all these communities and so much connection, so much healing, so much love being shared. And I was like, oh, Brittany, like you are the main, like you were the common denominator in all of these things. So my conclusion on the full moon last Friday, which was, you know, such a good release for many things in my vortex. Many things are just like, bye, wasting my energy on this thing. Bye, <laughs> bye, <laughs> so that I can be fully present, so that I can be here and able to have more energy to focus on all the things that I'm building out for you, all the things of how we can work together to help you create the dream life that you always desire. And like for me, like that is my passion. That is my pleasure. That is my passion. I do this offline with my community and I'm so excited to be building this more online with my community online, which is all of you. So um, the conclusion I came to when I was looking through all this stuff on the full moon was like, okay, Brittany, this was great that you, you know, that you made all of the stuff here in this specific house, this house that is behind me, that is, I am in, <laughs> that is encompassing me. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, but it's going to continue, you know, like the, the, the party will continue and it's just upgrading. It's going into a new version. It's going into more expansion and a huge shift. Um, and something that I don't know if I've made very clear in these podcasts was like, I wasn't planning to move out. My landlord wants me to move out. Uh, like they want to move their Thai family in. It's fine. It's like, it is what it is. I take it as a sign from the universe that it's time for me to move on. But there's these moments in your life where <laughs> this might happen for you as well, where you're like, I'm just dragging my feet here on this expansion that I know that I'm meant to have. Like I know that I'm meant to be in something bigger. I know that I'm meant to take this to the next level. All of the events that I do, my own life expansion, the vibration who, of who I am needs to match my living space. Like for me, where I live, it really, really matters. Like it, uh, like I feed off of the energy and the space and so like for some people where they live doesn't really matter they can just create they can do the thing i know from a human design perspective because i have an open g center it really matters to me my environment that i live in um this is why i love human design giving a shout out i give human design readings i had someone the other day ask if they could um buy human design readings for christmas presents i think that's such a cute idea so if you're interested in that it's already happening i have been giving them away as or people have been buying them to give them away as Christmas presents for their friends and family and I just think that is so cute so reach out to me if that's something you're interested in um, but anyways because of my open G center I know that my environment is really important so in this specific space I have outgrown it I already know this it's been like this for a couple of years now actually and there's been many times where I've like almost moved out and then I the, the, just like the collective like this space is called remote collective so the collective here the space um it keeps pulling me back what I realized was that it was a safety blanket it was for me this opera this like it was basically like <laughs> uh you know it's it's way below my budget of rent so it's really monetarily like safe and secure and also, I, I just know how everything works here, you know, like uh, it's close to everything I love. And there's just so many things that I love about the space, but it's kind of like you love it because it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, those like like those teddy bears that you've had since you were a kid and like you just like love them because they have so much emotional attachment, but they're not necessarily like something you'd like bring to like a fancy party <laughs> because they're kind of like falling apart. You've been put them through the wash too much and, you know, you had to sew them up a couple times. That's how I feel about this space. It's like I've been through so much here. I've had like so many relationships here, so much roller coaster of me stepping into my expansion and go and moving up and out. But like, I know that this space also, like I was saying before, the bottom line here is that the universe wants me to move out. And when I really ask myself, like, Brittany, 
if you were to let go of all your fears, if you were to let go of any of these like doubts that you have, would you move out of the space? And the answer is yes. I know that deep down inside, it is important for me to move on. And also, so basically it's happening. <laughs> like it's happening. I'm moving next week. And that's something that's really interesting because you know, like if you're in this moment of shift and you know, like if when you can get to the core of it and you can really ask yourself, like, if I wasn't in fear, if I wasn't worried about anything and I was just like, do I want to do this or not? Like if I'm just in full expansion mode, would you do the thing? Is That's the question. Because if the answer is yes and you're still not doing it, the reason is probably because you don't have the tools, you don't know how to do the shift, you don't know how to step into that expansion, or you need more support, uh, you need people around you that actually believe in you. Because you know, in today's world, it is very normal to stay, we are programmed since kids to stay small. Like, don't, don't dream too big, because what happens if you lose it? What happens if you don't get it? It's better to just stay safe, stay comfortable, put your head down, and fall in line. This is what we call matrix thinking. This is, this is like traditional thinking in the world where it usually came from the industrial revolution where they put people in factories and they just wanted you to put as much input, to get as much output as, you could, as they could from you. And like you could just clock in, do your shift, do your thing, go home. So that's the mentality of how the world is built. Um, like even from the moment you go into school, they put you in like literal boxes, like in classrooms, you know, you have all these like programming of how you show up, which puts you into university, which puts you into an office, which is all of these things about like, just fall in line, do the thing, don't think too big, you know, worry, 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 because what, what, what could possibly happen? Like bad things could happen, right? That is not how you manifest your dream life. But if you're surrounded by people who are in this vibration, and a lot of them don't even realize that they're in this like small-minded vibration, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no judgment value. It's just not the way that I choose to live my life. And I believe, actually, no, most people wouldn't don't want to live their life like this. They just don't know any other way. So if you're switched on enough, if you're watching this podcast or listening to it, if you're into more metaphysical things, if you're believing that you, you, you deserve something better, if your pain in your life has gotten so extreme that you're like, I cannot go any other way. I need to do something different. I can't just go backwards and do the same thing because you've already been in the loop too many times and the opportunity to upgrade and shift has kept coming to you, but you weren't able to do it. Then it's really important to get people around you that can help you in this shift because they can actually hold that vibrational reality for you until you can step into it. This is why I have a therapist. This is why I have mentors. This is why I have coaches. Because for me, in order for me to step into this vi new vibrational reality, um, I needed to have that support. Like, you know, it's a big shift for me, especially because most of my life I have been programmed to, you know, be in a partnership. Uh, even if I was doing all the work, even if I was bringing in all the money, I still had this programming to rely on the masculine to like be the one who's like, like, we're doing it, let's go, like kind of being the leader of the situation. So for me to be my own leader and to be fully in my feminine empowerment, which means to be resourced in my masculine and feminine energy inside of myself and to be able to use each one in a way that works for me, but to lead in my feminine because that's the, bo the body that I chose to be born into. It takes a lot of support. It takes a lot of help. Like I'm holding this vision of not just for me, but for my community and for the things that I'm here to birth. Like the universe is using me as this vessel to like birth new expansion, birth new beautiful events and community and just life through me. And you have this opportunity too. That's why I'm sharing this with you. So when you're allowing yourself to step out of the way and to trust that the universe wants to birth 
whatever it is, whatever is your excitement, whatever are your dreams, you have dreams for a reason. You have this dream of you doing this thing in the world and it could be a very big dream. It could be a very little dream. It doesn't matter. There's no judgment value on it. The point is, is that if it's something that is wanting to come through you, there's a reason for that and you will always be given the tools and the support, but you have to take the action to actually show up and like ask for those tools and believe that you deserve them, deserve the support and actually like receive it. Because for many years, I wasn't doing that. I was like, I had this uh, inner belief that I needed to do everything on my own because as a kid, this is what I had to do. And so I was showing up and helping so many people and everyone on the outside was like, wow, Brittany, you have it together. Like you're, you're leading a whole community. You are, you know, running a business. You're making so much impact in the world. Like you have your shit together. And I was like, I do. And also just like everyone I have moments where I need to lean on someone, where I need to ask for support. And in those moments, I wasn't allowing myself to receive it because I had this negative belief that um, I, need just, I just needed to keep it together. I needed to have everything look like it was perfect on the outside. Um, and that like, if I showed this vulnerability that you know I was having a bad day or that I needed support or I had some doubts, that somehow it would make all the rest of it fall apart which I'm super happy that I got a therapist and I was able to work through this because now I'm like, oh, I'm okay, I'm hitting a wall here. I really need some support. Some support. I just uh, book a, a coaching session with my coach or I book a therapy appointment, depending on what it is. And that is so regulating. It helps my nervous system come back into alignment and come back into symbiosis, which is like a calm state of peace because I know that I am fully supported and I'm guided and I have the support and I'm asking for it and I'm reaching out for it. And it's so beautiful. Um, so I wanted to share some, <laughs> I wrote down some things of uh, different moments in my life where I've done what I call like a major shift. And a lot of this was the universe. I would say hundred percent of this was the universe wanting to expand through me. It was like, okay, Brittany, it's time for you to really step up. It's time for you to go on this adventure and it's time for you to trust that it's all working out. And I was like, okay, okay, I got this. Let's go. Um, the first one was when I was moving to, I, I just gotten divorced and I was moving to Costa Rica and um, so I, I was leaving, I was 24 years old. I had just gotten uh, kicked out of my religion because I was getting divorced, which was not okay within the religion. And um, I had never lived in a foreign country before. I had only been outside of the con of America twice. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I just knew that deep in my heart, I needed to live in a foreign country. And the country that came to me was Costa Rica. There's a lot of reasons for this. Like one, I studied Spanish in school. Also within the United States, um, Costa Rica is considered, it's like marketed as like a very safe space. It's been very like, or safe country. It's been very westernized. Um, so I was like, okay, Costa Rica, let's go. Uh, and I literally didn't know anyone who lived there. I had never, again, I had never lived in a foreign country by myself. And also I had never worked remotely, but I convinced my law firm to let me work remotely. So they did like a test run for like two weeks before I left. So I went to San Diego and I like worked there for two weeks. Um, but I hadn't like worked, you know, long term as a full remote worker, which is the whole thing, like managing your schedule and, you know, at least I was on the same time zone as my my firm, but like <laughs> remote working in a foreign country right after you left a religious cult and getting divorced. Uh, and I want to put one more factor in. When I got there, the place that I stayed at, they said that they were like this co-living space with like Wi-Fi and it was like set up for remote workers. I got there, they had absolutely no Wi-Fi. So, and it wasn't for remote workers. It was just like a random space that, or like a house where they were like renting rooms and they were trying to market it to people who were working remotely. I mean, this was like 2014. So 
I'm going to give them some credit <laughs> that they even knew about this. Cause like back then all of this was very new. Uh, but I, when I was making that shift, I just had this huge download that like, like I told, like my law firm, like didn't want me to work remotely. And I just said to them, I was like, I have to go. I don't know why, but I have to go. I need to go to this place. I need to move to Costa Rica. I don't even know why it's Costa Rica. I don't know anyone there, but I need to go. And this is part of something that's coming through me. And, you know, I, I, and I said to them, I was like, I have savings. So if you don't want me to work for you, I understand, but, um, I need to go. And they were like, okay, okay. We like, we want you to work for us. We don't, we can't really afford to like lose you right now. So they worked it out where I was able to work remotely and they would like bring the, the laptop into the, into the conference room. And I would just be like, hi everyone, like for our firm meetings. Uh, and I was, I was the office manager at the time. Like I was doing a lot of different things for the firm. So I was just like, my hands were in many different projects. So like it was just funny that they let me work remotely because I was <laughs> just like, like when I look back on it, I'm just like, this was definitely divinely guided because no sane person probably would have let me go at that moment. I mean, that's why I guess that's why they let me work remotely because they really needed me. But anyways, I had a full stack of work. I moved to Costa Rica. I had a very difficult time finding Wi-Fi. I found Wi-Fi. I ended up like, um, becoming super close with the family. I found Wi-Fi at this hotel that like I ended up like sitting outside of this hotel lo lobby that had really good Wi-Fi near my house and I became really good friends with the people who ran the hotel that became like a Costa Rican family for me and showed up for me in many ways. And I just, I was, the reason why I ended up needing to be there was because I needed space in order to process everything that had just happened. And I needed to be in a completely clean new environment energetically in order to process my, my divorce of six years. Like I've been married for six years, being raised in what I consider a, a extremist religion, like you call it a cult. And also just programming, all the programming that I've been raised with as a woman, being raised in a society as an American, like there was just so much I was trying to figure out. And I was so happy that I had made that shift to, to a clean energetic space because it gave me the, it gave me the, the launching pad for everything else that I was meant to do in my life. And wow, I was so, <laughs> I just felt like a, you know, like a brand new baby. I was just like, I'd wake up in the morning and like go surfing and then like spend my day like working on my laptop and then like uh, go for a sunset and and like <laughs> I just remember I like uh, you know machete it's like these big knives I even I had a car and I would put a machete in my car and I would go and um, I would cut down my own coconuts because in Costa Rica they're like really low where you can like like here in Thailand the coconuts are like really high up but in Costa Rica, they're like low enough where you can just like cut them off yourself and they're abundant. So it's not like you're taking someone's coconuts, right? Because here in Thailand, this is actually a thing. <laughs> but there you can just like stop on the side of the road and grab a coconut. No one cares. And so I would do this. And I remember one time I, um, I was like, just like I cut, I cut down my coconut and then I was like cutting it open with this huge knife, this huge machete. And then I look over and this whole, <laughs> this whole group of Chinese tourists were like taking videos of me and like photos. And I was just like, oh my God, I have become like, <laughs> I have become like the, the, like the thing to take photos of. You know, like the like the monkey in the zoo. They're just like, <laughs> what? and I was just like, what what is happening here? Um, but I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't have been able to step into any of that, which was really me connecting to like my wild woman and me me connecting back to my power and and also I believe that every time that you step into one of these shift moments where you're like shifting from one vibration to a higher vibration, which is basically you more in your power. It is, it is such a huge opportunity for expansion. And in those moments, it, it really is like you're stepping off the ledge, but then you fly when you trust and you have the support and the tools in order to really be holding this vibration. 
and it's so much fun actually because I look back on these moments and like there's so many, so many times uh, I spent about six months living based in Central America and wow I look back on these moments and I'm like there's so many times where there's no way that this would have worked out if I wasn't divinely guided like it's just so many moments where I'm just this 24 year old girl like in the middle of the Costa Rican rainforest without Wi-Fi just driving on these like <laughs> on these like curvy roads and I'm just like there's all I have to be protected I have to be just so many moments but that that shift like those those shift moments when you are like shifting from one version of you to a higher version of you that's really where the game of life is like I feel like the most juicy because you are fully putting all your car your, your whatever you want <laughs> you put you're going all in and I don't gamble so I'm like trying to put like this <laughs> gambling analogy but like you're putting all of your is it coins tokens chips it's chips you're putting all your chips in the game and everything's on the line and yeah it's super intense it's also really exciting and then you're like oh, I have this amazing story because at the end of the day like when you look back on your life it's not about you know, how much money did you make or this or that? It's like, what experiences did you have? How much did you trust the universe? How much did you step into your power and follow what is your dream? What is your divinely guided soul mission that's here that you know you're here to do? And, you know, or did you like stay working in an office for someone else for the rest of your life? Like I call those people NPCs, non-playing characters in this game of life. So if you want to be an NPC and live in fear, that's fine. I don't judge it. You know, I did that for six years. Uh, and every day I woke up and I was so frustrated by my life and I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain at the end of my uh, legal t t career that I ended up getting shingles, which is like a, um, it's a nerve. It's like basically it causes nerve pain it's caused by stress and it shows up as a rash. Uh, but if it keeps going or if you don't get medication for it, um, basically if you don't stop the stress that is causing it, it will cause like nerve damage. And if it crosses over to the other side, like usually the rash shows up on one side of your body. And if it crosses over to the other side of your body, you can die. So this is like really intense stuff. I got this at the end of my legal like career. I was so stressed out at work and I was basically just living out of out of alignment in such an extreme way and my body was talking to me my body was like I don't want to do this anymore and I just kept going and I kept going and I kept going because I didn't know what else to do and I was just like you know when you're already so deep into it and you don't have people around you to remind you that there's something else and that there's something better out there and to believe in yourself and to believe the universe, what you have is these reinforcements of stay in fear and worry and da 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 da. And so then that just, it's like you're digging your grave even more. And so you just keep digging it and you just keep going. And for me, that was a really big wake up call because I was in literal so much physical pain in my body. And it was t my body telling me, I don't wanna do this anymore. I need to shift out of this. Whatever we're doing right now in this game of life is not working for me and I need to shift. And at the time, I didn't know, I wasn't really allowing myself to consciously be like, this is because of my job. It was only because I already had booked a holiday to Greece during this time, like before I had gotten the shingles um, and I was in all this pain, I'd already booked this holiday. So they ended up putting me on like morphine pills because this is how much pain I was in. And I'm someone who does not take pills. Like I grew up with my mom being like, try and take as much herbs as you can go natural. You know, like I did all this stuff, but if you're in pain, you're in pain, you know, like, like I really couldn't function. And so I had to be on morphine pills. And I just remember like being in bed, working remotely on my laptop and my boss, like being really upset that I wasn't in the office and just, just like, going crazy in my head because I was just in so much pain and I was just kept going and I was trying to keep it together and I'd already booked this holiday to Greece and like they were like well you shouldn't go because you know I thought you were sick my, my boss was like I thought you were sick like why why would you go and I was like something I mean was just like just go 
it doesn't matter. You just need to fucking get out of here. And so I just told them, I was like, I already booked everything. I'm going to just go. And if I end up needing to come back, I will. So I went with my partner at the time. And I remember like two days into the, the trip, he was asking me like, how are you feeling? Like, I noticed that you're, you haven't taken any of your pills, like the morphine. And I just, I, I like consciously recognized, I was like, what? Because for me, I would take the, the pills like when the pain got so bad, like I really tried to not take them. But when the pain would get so bad, I would like take one to take the edge off. And without realizing it, I hadn't taken any morphine pills since we got to Greece. And it's because I wasn't in stress. I wasn't in an environment living in New York City, working in a law firm that I didn't want to work in with a boss who was abusive. Like, it was just like... And then I, I just remember sitting down on the sidewalk, like my, my boyfriend at the time and I were like in this beautiful town, like we were in Athens in one of the neighborhoods and they were having this market and there was just, you know, people selling like fresh fruits and vegetables and everyone was super happy and it was just like really beautiful there. It was like a spring morning in the middle. I think it was like a Wednesday and every, I don't know, it's just, it was like, it's just like so cute. I just love foreign like uh, towns with like little farmer's markets and everyone's just like... So I don't know, it just feels like very tribal and like very happy. And I, remember, I just remember sitting down on the sidewalk, looking at, overlooking all of this. And uh, my partner sat down next to me and he was like, are you okay? And I just said to him, I don't want to live in New York anymore. Like, I don't know how, what I'm going to do next. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here, but I just can't do this anymore. I just realized this is, this is literally like killing my body. Like I can't, I can't. I'm not gonna I refuse to die a slow death like working for someone that I don't even like and living in a city that is no longer giving me anything that I thought it was going to like I thought New York was going to be this like amazing you know everyone has this dream of New York especially living in California like you want to move to New York and like do all this stuff and when I got there <laughs> I mean everyone can have their own reality but I lived there for I lived there for over a year and a half almost two years and a lot of my friends that live there have lived there for 10 years. And, you know, like, yeah, you can make really good money in New York, but it's not like a life that you want for your children. Like most people, when they get kids, when they have kids, they end up leaving New York because of it. And then I was thinking, like, if it's not a life you want for your kids, is it a life you even want for yourself? <laughs> you know, like, what are we doing to ourselves? Um, but anyways, that, that was the moment where I decided in Greece where I needed to shift out of living in New York and and I didn't know how I was going to do it you know I didn't know what the next step was I just made this decision that it was happening and that I was going to start acting in alignment with that decision that was that was the commitment that I made to myself and then I ended up getting like a coach I ended up I just started reaching out to everyone and letting them know like that I was like shifting into something else and that you know I was looking for opportunities and I was just like putting myself out there I was taking action on the thing that I knew I needed to do. And there's so many more stories I could share with you, but like these are the ones where I just, I just felt really called today to like, cause so many of you asking me about this, like when we're doing coaching, like, okay, it's end of the year. I want to book like a coaching package with you to like shift. And we're going to, my team and I are going to be offering a lot more coming up about different ways that you can work with us and work with me and uh, catch some of this yummy energy in a way where it's actually like helping your life and helping you shift to the vibration that you want to be on because that's what we're here for you know like we all we all are here to live this dream life and whatever that means for you whatever that means for you you deserve to live it but you need to be able to have the tools you need to have the support and you need to be able to take the action it's like tools it's like learn Get the support, take the action. This is how it works. This is how it worked for everything I've done in my life. And I think for everyone, this is how it works. So if you're sitting there and you're like beating yourself up because you don't know what to do, but you know you need to make a shift, just stop. <laughs> just stop being mean to yourself and recognize that um, we're not meant to do it alone. You know, like we're here for each other. We're here to learn from each other. This is why I love making these podcasts because... I feel like just by sharing this, it can activate you that you can live your dream life. But there's steps you're going to need to take. The steps to take. It's not, I had someone say to me the other day, they were like, Brittany, when you share on your podcast, sometimes it's like, 
you just had this life before and then you just popped you just popped into this reality and I was like am I not sharing so much about the transition and then I realized the reason why I don't share about it that much is because it's it's not like something you can just like um contextualize into like a you know a 30 minute podcast or an hour long podcast it's like this is a lifetime of lived experience and lessons and learnings and if I'm gonna share it with you I want it to be in a way where you actually can apply it you know so (sighs) we're out here we're building those things I'm building those things when I say we I'm just saying it because I have a team of, of beautiful women who work with me and they're super inspired to uh, get the message of what we're doing out there more and to also help you like and I just I just love it I just love my life I'm just putting a shout out there that I really am grateful for my timeline for my lifetime to live on a paradise island just I'm looking down at my baby afro here sleeping next to me and with all of my best friends and moving into such a luxurious villa next next week and just like hosting the sexiest events. Like this weekend we have uh, our last play party here at the space and it's filling up so nicely and just like so much juiciness in my life right now. And I'm so grateful for it. And just working on with a team of women who are just like so excited to support me in my expansion through allowing, you know, creating structure for me so that I can, I can help all of you so much more. And working with like some of my my closest friends on all of this it just makes me so happy this is what I was, I've always dreamed of this to do uh, to create impact in the world that makes the world a better place to empower women and to work with my best friends and to live on a paradise island with all of my rest of my friends and my soul family and I'm just like uh, I'm so happy <laughs> so just sharing this with you as like um, activation that if I can sit down and write out my dream life and then get the support and the tools and then just go do it um, and build it, even if it takes 10 years, you know, like that moment I was sharing about me moving to Costa Rica, that was 10 years ago. So if it takes 10 years and it doesn't need to take you 10 years, but I'm just saying like this journey takes a while, but we got a lot of time. You know, we got time. We're here. We're here for it. So it's less about getting overwhelmed and more about like sitting down and asking yourself, what action can I take today to shift to this? What what resources can I get? What help can I get? Um, I have a couple more slots open for my one-on-one coaching, but those I'm going to I'm going to close soon because we're going to start doing group coaching. Uh, I, I just really love like the last uh, course that I did with you guys. Um, we did some live Q and A's and I just really love doing the group coaching. I find that like bringing the community together because so many of you really, really also, um, you know, you, you want to be connected to each other. You want to feel like you have community and that's also what these things are doing. Um, these coaching calls, um, is bringing the community of powerful women together and I'm here for all of that. Oh, okay, I could keep going, but I have a business meeting with my team in like half an hour, so I'm going to get prepared for that and then probably go to the gym. I've been trying to like pace myself because last week I was working out every day. You probably can't see. If you watch my Insta stories, you can see. I'm really proud of myself for <coughs> for like working out and just like taking care of my body, you know, and then like, getting sick. Sometimes I'm like... Mm, I want to go exercise. Okay, pace yourself, Brittany. Like, make sure you're 100%. So, also just giving a shout out that if you're facing that too, I feel you. I think it's just the changing seasons here. We don't have, like, the cold, but we have a lot of, um, like, right now, November is the rainy season. And so, sometimes it can be really hot and then really cold. So, it's just, like, this fluctuation puts my body into, like, wah! Um I'm here for it. I'm writing it out. It's happening. The sauna really helps. Very grateful for the sauna here. Okay, I'm sending you all lots of love, and I hope that you have a beautiful day.